Hello everybody, thank you for joining us here at Altitude University. Today we're going to be talking about the new regulations regarding remote ID and talk a little bit about what ADSB is. <music> To start off, what is remote ID? Well, remote ID is the ability of a drone to broadcast its identification and location information during flight. Now, primarily, this is so that law enforcement and the FAA has the ability to view this information. What information is being broadcast? Well, it's going to be the serial number, latitude and longitude of the drone, and the altitude as well as the velocity. Now, the FAA has come up with a few different ways that we can comply with this new regulation. The first one being standard remote ID. Now, this is where the remote ID capabilities are already built into the drone. Then we have drones with remote ID broadcast modules. So this is going to be a module that you attach to your drone in order to give it these capabilities. So this would be if you already own a drone and then you went out and bought that module to attach to yours. And then we simply have drones without remote ID. Now each one of these categories do have their own restrictions. The standard remote and the drones with the remote ID broadcast modules are able to broadcast the information via radio frequency, whether that be Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Now if you're going to be operating your drone without remote ID, then you are restricted to flying only in an FAA recognized identification area. So just to reiterate those restrictions, if you are operating your drone with the remote ID broadcast module, you are still restricted to operating that drone within a visual line of sight, which is a term that we use often. If you are going to be operating your drone without remote ID, you are still limited again to that visual line of sight and you're only able to operate your drone in a FRIA or the FAA recognized identification area. So when do we need to comply with this new regulation? Well, as of April 21st, 2021, this is when the rule became effective. As of September 16th, 2022, drone manufacturers must comply with this regulation, so they'll start incorporating the capabilities of that into the drone. Now, September 16th, 2023 is when all drone pilots must comply with this new regulation. ADSB, what is it? Well, it stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. Now, this is mainly used between manned aircraft and ATC. It gives real-time precision and shared situational awareness between both parties. As of right now, this is regulated under Part 91 and is not required for Part 107 operations for the time being. There's a difference between ADSB out and ADSB in. So ADSB out is the capability of the aircraft to broadcast that information. However, ADSB in would be if the manned aircraft was able to receive that information, say inside the cockpit, they were able to pick up other traffic. That would be ADSB in. So those are just two terms that you might see while studying for your Part 107. Let's get into some questions that we might see on our test for the Part 107 written. First off, what must a person who is manipulating the controls of a small unmanned aircraft do if the standard remote identification fails during a flight? A. Land the aircraft as soon as possible. B. Notify the nearest FAA air traffic facility. Or C. Activate the aircraft's navigation lights. In this situation, we would want to land the aircraft as soon as possible, so our answer here is going to be A. Where must a small unmanned aircraft serial number be listed when using either standard remote identification or a broadcast module? So this is asking about our aircraft serial number here. Either A, the aircraft's document of compliance, B, the manufacturer's method of compliance, or C, the certificate of aircraft registration. Our answer here is going to be C. We want to have that serial number listed on the certificate of aircraft registration. A person may not use a remote ID broadcast module that A, relies solely on a software upgrade to existing hardware on the UA, B, is installed by anyone other than the UA manufacturer, or C, fails the self-test when powered on. Our answer here is C. So one of the things that we need to check before we take flight is that the small UA has passed the self-test for the broadcast module. 
When operated under Part 107, an unmanned aircraft that weighs less than 0.55 pounds must comply with remote ID requirements. A. True. B. Only true if the unmanned aircraft is flown in that restricted area. Or C. False. Our answer here is A. True because we are operating that unmanned aircraft under Part 107 regulations. A small unmanned aircraft without remote ID that's equipped after production with a remote ID broadcast module, either A may only operate at FAA recognized identification areas, B is limited to line of sight operations, or C may not be operated in the national airspace system. Our answer here is B. So we can still operate our drone. It just needs to be within the limitations of our visual line of sight. That's all we have for you guys today regarding remote ID and ADSB. If you have any questions, please reach out to us and have a great rest of your day.